Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a Costa Rican American, born and raised in Boston. I was raised in a multilingual household. I have a background in building machine learning systems, and I love data and open source. And just as a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not actually an accessibility expert, but I do love getting feedback from users. And I um, want to tell you a little bit more about why I decided to work on AYA. Next slide, please. Uh, so what really drew, to my, drew me to AYA was that it was a great overlap between so many things that I love and respect. And I thought, well, what better way to contribute to machine learning research than to help make a better data set that could encapsulate all different languages, cultures, and ways of thinking about the world, and then bring that into a large language model. Uh, on top of that, working on this project has kind of been like working on a small product or a startup, uh, or not even small, a large product or startup, where we move really fast to do something incredibly valuable on a team of great people. Next slide, please. So as I go through these slides, I'll kind of jump between how we developed our tool and what results we had. But our team goal since the very beginning was to design and codify a UI and backend to provide an intuitive interface for accessible collection of multilingual annotations. Next slide, please. So last February and March, we started doing research on what was already out there and started to create and iterate on UI wireframes and data models. And really early on, we identified a few key needs uh, and, that, and that we needed to uh, quickly and easily sign up people onto, onto the project. We needed a simple interface for people to contribute with only what was absolutely necessary. And we needed to enable different kinds of contributions like re-annotations of existing data or submitting new annotations. Next slide, please. So we started working on the onboarding and the signup page. And we the most minimal thing we could collect in terms of information to form our research was country of residence and the languages in which contributors had written fluency. Next slide, please. And gathering this data really helped enable us to visualize and show that I is a global effort. Um, we reached 119 countries, over 100 languages, and roughly 3,000 users. Next slide, please. And after a few months, we actually added the option to fellow age and gender information. And in this area, I think we can still grow a lot more. Next slide, please. So uh, once we got around to April, we finally had our first task focused on re-annotations and we did some internal testing and some iterations on, on it until it felt really responsive before we really started to show what data we had. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Cool. And then soon after that, we had to think through what was really going to make this better in terms of accessibility. And somebody can check me on this, but I believe roughly 50% of the world has mobile internet access. And so to improve accessibility of AYA, we really need to support a mobile-friendly layout. And this was really important as we saw 46% of our users actually ended up using mobile browsers to contribute. So we did our initial launch in May, and we realized that a lot of folks didn't actually know what they were supposed to do once they looked at this screen. So we had to quickly iterate and improve our UI with a few changes. Next slide, please. So there are probably five key changes I think we identified uh, pretty immediately. One was which that we had to add a component to switch between tasks rather than going back and forth to the home page. That made it really difficult to make uh, con contributions in, in different ways. Uh, the second thing was that we had to add an objective. So what should users be looking to do on this page? The third thing were, was adding instructions on what to do and what to look out for, uh, like complete sentences or a reasonable length with clear instructions. The fourth thing was to make it easier to do, <laughs> make it easier for users to do what we want them to do, which is to read and then make edits if they're necessary. And the last thing is that we needed to be able to support showing languages in a direction which they're meant to be read left to right or right to left. Next slide, please. And we integrated these changes into all the different uh, tasks that we supported. Next slide, please. And we saw that contributors were highly active and for many days at a time once they got on our, on our UI. And something that's actually not captured here is that most users are actually able to make a contribution within 10 minutes or less of logging into the IUI on average. So we knew, we really knew what we were doing was working. Next slide, please. And as we started to get, uh, more submissions and more contributions, we, we, we were thinking really hard about how to improve the quality of the data we were getting. So we spent time working on task three, which enabled users to see what others were doing and rate the quality of their re-annotations. So this is a form of peer feedback that we integrated uh, to, improve, to improve and encourage contributions. Next slide, please. 
Sometime shortly after, we introduce what we call the IS score, and we really wanted to encourage high quality submissions. So we consider the number of re annotations, the original annotations, the quality rating that users got through peer review, and also the amount of positive feedback through the thumbs up and thumbs down mechanism. And we integrated this into our leaderboards, which is actually not showing here. Uh, next slide, please. And so one of the properties that we saw in better quality contributions was completion length. And once we introduced the score, we started to see average completion length increased. Next slide, please. And towards the end of our data collection efforts, we looked at the average approval ratio, which is the ratio of thumbs up compared to the number of thumbs that people gave out. And we learned that original annotations that were contributed were actually perceived to be of the highest quality compared to the existing and aug augmented data sets that we surfaced to users. Next slide, please. And we observed between uh, the length and the perceived quality that there was a positive correlation. So this really emphasizes how important it is to incorporate things like complete sentences when you're engaging with the language model. Next slide, please. So just a few UI challenges in collecting multilingual data. There's a lot of them in terms, in general, when you're building a UI, but I'll just quickly cover three of them uh, that we discovered kind of working on this project. Next slide, please. So the first is that we need to ensure that we display a diverse set of data on which we can collect feedback while allowing for you know, new data contributions. We have a central data store that we pull from that shows data that we've collected, augmented or translated. And as we add more, data, the distribution starts to shift, and we might show data that is skewed towards larger data sets. Next, next slide, please. Uh, the, second, the second challenge is having rich metadata to inform UI decisions. So an example is language identification script information. If we can't properly identify languages because they might be under, they might have different names depending on what country you look at, uh, then it can make it really hard for contributors to figure out where the right place is to contribute. Some languages are also read left to right, and some are read right to left. And surprisingly, for some languages, for some languages, there is conflicting information regarding the direction of text. So we actually had to rely on finding contributors for a specific language to correctly display the language text. Next slide, please. And the third thing is that balancing UX and ease of use with shipping useful features that enable high quality data collection uh, really matters. And small details matter a lot. If someone finds bad data, do they downvote it? Do they skip it? Do they translate it to the correct language? The user experience is important in shaping how users make these kinds of decisions. At the same time, we still want to be able to enable people to make contributions very quickly. Next slide, please. And just want to give a quick shout out to my team. A special thanks to Haram Shandilia, Oshan, Farhan, and also thank you to the regional leads, benchmarking team, data team, contributors, I, uh, folks from Cohere, and Lots of our folks I, I can't even cover here. This, they would take up too many slides. So thank you very much. This is the end of my talk and pass it over to the next person.